Z-Sonic, the heart of your system. Alright guys, Dominic here for KitGuru and today we are looking at the new AMD Radeon RX 5700 and the new RX 5700 XT. So obviously as these are new cards, they're also built on a new architecture, which is the RDNA architecture. I'm just going to give you kind of a quick spec overview here because I really do want to dive into performance because obviously this is the most exciting thing. It's kind of a little bit of an unknown quantity. We're really not sure exactly where these cards are going to slot into in the market. But so just for a quick spec overview, if you want to find a few more details and a few more specifications, you can head over to the written review on kitguru.net. Uh, but just like I said, some key overview changes. It's the new RDNA architecture, and both these cards are obviously fabricated using TSMC's 7 nanometer process. So that means a few things. First of all, die size is actually significantly reduced, and AMD says we should expect to see a 2.3 times performance per area increase with Navi versus the old Vega architecture. And then another thing we can also expect is increased power efficiency with AMD again saying a 1.5 times performance per watt increase with these Navi cards versus Vega again. So that's going to be particularly interesting to look at later on. RDNA has also completely reworked the compute unit design or the CU design. Uh, so it's interesting to note quickly kind of the layout of the GPU with each card. So the RX 5700 XT is a full Navi GPU where we have 40 CUs, which in turn means 2,560 stream processors. For the 5700, this has been cut down by four CUs. So what that means is it has 2,304 stream processors. So it's not a massive difference. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that affects performance. Both cards also come with 8GB of GDDR6 memory and this is interesting as it kind of marks a shift away from AMD always using high bandwidth memory or HBM which we saw Vega 56, Vega 64 and also the Radeon 7. So it's 8GB of G6 memory that's also clocked at 14 gigabits per second and over a 256 bit bus that gives total memory bandwidth of 448GB per second for both cards. Now, we already mentioned the fact that the 5700 has slightly fewer stream processors. Obviously, that's going to be one thing which reduces its performance. And the 5700 is also clocked slightly slower as well. We're going to look at a kind of typical gain boost clocks. MD's done something a little bit different with uh, how the whole clock speed thing works. So we're going to look at that later on in the review. But just to give you some initial figures, the RX 5700 has a rated boost clock of 1725 megahertz, while the RX 5700 XT has a rated boost clock of 19 and 5 megahertz. So there's a reasonable difference there. But like I said, we're going to touch on clock speed later on in this review. And then now we come to pricing. This is a particularly interesting thing um, because we initially heard pricing where the 5700 was going to be 379 US dollars and the 5700 XT was going to be 449 dollars. Just for, for the UK viewers out there, at the, for this whole video, the only things I'm going off are US dollars. We're still waiting for confirmed British pound pricing at the time of filming. But initial US pricing was going to be $379 for the 5700 and then $449 for the XT model. However, on Friday, so just two days before the launch, AMD actually got in touch with us and they said, hold on a minute, we're cutting the prices. So now the 5700 starts at $349, whereas the 5700 XT starts at $399, and those are the MSRP prices. So this is actually quite significant in the fact that initially it looked like the 5700 was basically taking on NVIDIA's new RTX 2060 Super, and the 5700 XT was going to kind of slot in between the 2060 Super and the 2070 Super. Now, however, AMD has kind of effectively shifted the goalposts. So the 5700 is ex priced exactly the same as the original RTX 2060, and the 5700 XT is now priced the same as the RTX 2060 Super. 
So just how well do these cars perform in relation to both the original 2060 and both the supermodels? We're going to find out right now. So in this video, we're going to be showing you our 1080p and 1440p benchmarks. We did test both cars at 4K, but if you want to find that information as well as our full testing methodology, you can head over to kitguru.net. So then our initial testing was kind of a little bit inconclusive with 3D Mark Firestrike and Time Spy, as their scores weren't necessarily that consistent between one test to another. But it was when we got into Battlefield 5, which is our first game test, this is where things got really, really interesting. Simply because the 5700 was actually beating the 2060 Super and it was coming even closer to the 2070 Super. As for the 5700 XT, this card was actually a fair margin ahead of the 2070 Super. Which, So for a first game benchmark, this wasn't really the performance I was expecting. It was definitely in AMD's favour. That trend also continued into Deus Ex Mankind Divided, where we actually saw an even bigger lead for the AMD cards versus their NVIDIA counterparts. It was safe to say at this point in the benchmarking, I was kind of a little bit gobsmacked and I wasn't quite sure what was going on. Things do settle down a little bit as we go on further through the rest of our benchmarks, but we still see very solid performance from both cards. In titles like Far Cry 5, Ghost Recon Wildlands and also Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we see the 5700 kind of slotting in between the 2060 and the 2060 Super, although it was really never that far behind the 2060 Super. As for the 5700 XT, this proved to be slower than the 2070 Super in all but two of our benchmarks, Although, that being said, it is faster than the 2060 Super in all but one of our benchmarks. So, you can kind of see it as close-ish to the 2070 Super, but consistently faster than the 2060 Super. So then, overall, while we can touch on kind of overall average performance of these cards, the one thing I do want to say, particularly with these cards more than any other I've tested recently, is that there is actually a lot of variation between game to game and also from API to API. If we take the RX 50 and as an example, it is 12% faster than the 2060 Super in Deus Ex Mankind Divided, but then again it is 15% slower than the 2060 Super in Middle Earth Shadow of War. So that is a really big difference. So overall, the 2060 Super is actually on average faster by 1%. But what that figure does is it really kind of hides all the individual kind of swings we're seeing from game to game. So one thing I would suggest is while we can give you kind of the overall average performance, if there's a particular game you're interested, I would strongly recommend you go and try and find the figures for that particular game, as we are likely to see quite a lot of difference with these cards versus their NVIDIA counterparts, depending on the game. For now, the last metric I want to look at is actually clock speed. So I mentioned at the beginning of this video that AMD was kind of being a little bit funny with what it was doing. That's because it's now giving us three different clock speeds. We're getting a base, we're getting a new game clock, and we're also getting a boost clock. So it's the game clock I want to focus on here, as this is basically the frequency you should expect from the cards while you're actually gaming. So for the 5700, the rated game clock is 1625 megahertz. But I actually saw the card run faster than that in our Firestrike Ultra Stress Test, with the card averaging closer to 1650 megahertz. The 5700 XT as well has a rated game clock of 1755 megahertz, but I actually saw my sample exceed this by even further. It was running about 70 megahertz faster than its rated game clock. The clock speed obviously does depend on a few factors, including power and temperatures. So it's going to be really interesting what we're going to see from custom cards in regards to how far they can push those rated game clocks. But for now, I did find my reference designs to be slightly exceeding the rated game clocks. Speaking of reference designs, we're going to quickly look at the two cars themselves now. AMD's actually gone with the blower style design for both of the cars. We haven't seen a new kind of like triple fan cooler like we did for the Radeon 7. So it's blower style coolers for both the 5700 and the 5700 XT. And functionally, they are actually very similar. There's obviously some aesthetic differences, which we're going to get to shortly. But starting with the baby brother of the family, the 5700, this is generally pretty simple to look at. It's not necessarily the most exciting design. It's got an aluminium shroud, which does feel premium in the hand, and it's this kind of lighter gray color. But it's generally not that exciting. It's kind of this relatively boxy design as well so not that special it also has two radian logos printed on it in red but these don't light up there's no actually leds on this card so it is like i said quite simple to look at the 5700 xt on the other hand definitely catches my eye a lot more 
It's also made from aluminium, but it's got this really nice kind of ridged design going on. So it's got these kind of lines etched into the shroud, which gives it a really nice texture, and I think also helps set it apart visually. There's also some more red accents on this card, so it's slightly less plain, and the Radeon logo on the front side of the shroud does indeed light up red when your system is powered on. Now, we obviously couldn't mention the XT without talking about the dent, as people are calling it. So it's basically, it does look like a dent. It looks like someone's maybe just kind of kicked the card just here on this edge and it's kind of got this I think AMD officially calls it a contour and it is supposed to actually help with airflow but uh, personally I, I've got well I've got no meaningful way of testing that and for me on the outside it certainly looks like more of a way just to differentiate this car from other reference designs and kind of help it stand out and at the very least it's certainly got people talking so that's probably job done for AMD's marketing team. As for the size of both graphics cards they are generally pretty similar in size they're both dual slot thickness although the XC is slightly longer I measured that at 277 millimeters long while I measured the regular 15700 at 268 millimeters long. I do think it is a shame however that the 5700 itself doesn't have a backplate you're just looking onto the bare PCB when you're looking at the rear of the card which I always like to see a backplate especially as at $349 this still isn't a cheap card. Backplates I think always help with the aesthetics and they also provide extra kind of I guess a layer of protection from any potential all-in-one cooler uh, liquid spills and lastly they can also help spread the heat out on the back of the card so point one is I would have liked to see a backplate on this card but the XT does indeed have a backplate and this is black so it just slightly contrasts with the rest of the grey shroud though there is also a cutout behind the GPU core. Now as for power requirements both cards are the same in that they need one 6-pin and one 8-pin PCI power connectors and the total board power is rated at 185 watts for the 5700 and 225 watts for the 5700 XT. The last thing to mention just quickly is display I.O. and this is the same for both cards as we have three display ports and then one HDMI. Now as for how these reference boards actually perform, we're going to start with thermal performance and here I have to say it's, you know, general performance is okay but it's definitely not fantastic. The 5700 actually peaked at 77 degrees on the GPU when under load and it was 3 degrees hotter for the 5700 XT. This is, like I said, it's okay, uh, but it's certainly nothing amazing, um, especially if you compare it to NVIDIA's Founders Edition coolers. They typically run a lot cooler, so the 2060S, I think, that peaked at 70 degrees, and the 2070S peaked at 73 degrees. So these blur-style designs do definitely run a bit hotter than their NVIDIA counterparts. As for noise levels, while neither card is as loud as Vega 56, they are both definitely on the loud side, with my sound meter recording over 52 decibels of noise for both cards. Like I said, that's not as loud as Vega 64, but it's definitely still uncomfortably loud. And compared to NVIDIA's Founders Edition designs, like take the 2060S for instance, which is effectively silent, these two cards are significantly louder. That definitely puts the emphasis on AMD's partners, so it'll be fascinating to see kind of what the noise levels are like from custom cards when they come out in the coming weeks and months. On a more positive note, however, we have to say that AMD's power efficiency has increased absolutely tremendously. If we compare the 5700 to the 2060S, the 5700 is actually pulling less than 10 watts more in terms of total system power draw. And for the 5700 XT versus the 2070 Super, the difference is just 2 watts. So for both cars, they're effectively drawing the same amount of power as their NVIDIA counterparts, which I have to say is probably one of the biggest performance increases for these new cards. Putting things another way, if we compare the 5700 XT to Vega 64, not only does it actually draw 120 watts less at the wall, but the 5700 XT is also 16% faster. So that is a massive drop in power consumption while also increasing overall performance. So definitely a massive positive for AMD in terms of their new power efficiency. So it's at this point in the video where I usually touch on manual overclocking and if you've kind of been following recent AMD launches you may be seeing where this is going. Effectively I wasn't able to get any meaningful overclocks on these cards at all. AMD is actually aware of this. They did send us an email and basically told us that the pre-release driver that was supplied to press just isn't friendly to any overclock. So 
Basically what would happen was I could go into uh, MSI Afterburner or also using Wattman, I could dial in the frequencies but basically they wouldn't stick which is very similar to what I had with Radian 7. So the end result was while the frequencies were supposedly changing I wasn't actually getting any real difference to my fire strike scores for instance. So at the time of filming it is definitely a big shame that I haven't been able to effectively test what overclocking these cards is actually like. Obviously, I am filming this the day before the embargo lifts, so if anything does change between now and then, I will of course update the description and will also put our results over in the written review on kitguru.net. But as of now, it is a big shame that we haven't been able to manually overclock these cards. So then, just to wrap up this video, there is absolutely no doubt in my mind that AMD has done something very unexpected but still very special with its new Radeon RX 5700 and the RX 5700 XT. So we all initially thought that the 5700 was going to go up against the 2060 Super and the 5700 XT was kind of going up against the 2070 Super but it was also slotting in between the 2060 and the 2070 Super. However, what AMD did was they kind of I guess it was a masterstroke really in the fact that they cut prices ahead of launch. So where the 5700 was meant to be $379, it became $349. And where the 5700 XT was meant to be $449, that fell by $50 to $399. So that puts the 5700 right up against the 2060, and it also puts the 5700 XT right up against the 2060 Super. What this means is AMD has effectively managed to shift the goalposts massively in their favour. So the 5700 going up against the RTX 2060, this card is on average 13% faster and if we look at the 5700 XT going up against the 2060 Super that card is on average 10% faster so that's 10 and 13% performance increases for effectively the same money so I have to say that is just a clear win for AMD. There is definitely something to be said for Nvidia and its support for ray tracing because at the moment both these AMD cards there just isn't any support for ray tracing in games. So if you do want to play with ray trace shadows or ray trace reflection or anything like that, you do need to get an NVIDIA card. I really expect NVIDIA to be ramping up the marketing on this as well because they fully know that. So they are definitely going to be trying to hammer home the difference that these cards don't have ray tracing while the RTX lineup does. That being said, at the moment, I really don't think it's actually that big of a deal. While we did just have E3 where kind of blockbuster after blockbuster was announced with support for NVIDIA RTX, at the moment there's only three, or I guess four if you include Quake 2, but I don't really, only three titles which actually support ray tracing, so we can only really go on what we see at the moment. Even then, the 5700 is still faster than the RTX 2060, and the 5700 XT is still faster than the RTX 2060 Super. So if that isn't an absolute win for AMD, then I really don't know what is. So then, I'm Dominic Falkett Guru, and this has been my review of the new Radiant RX 5700 and RX 5700 XT. Do leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. Did you think either of these cards were going to be as competitive as they turned out to be? And does it all really just come down to pricing? Was that final price cut by AMD a masterstroke or kind of just a move of panic? Do let me know your comments down below. You can also subscribe and hit that bell icon if you haven't already so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. If you'd like to get some of our videos early and even get access to exclusive giveaways, you can consider backing us on Patreon. And I'd also strongly recommend you to check out the Kit Guru merch, which is linked below. Until then, though, guys, I'm Dominic for Kit Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.